from positive educational change here. Um, so today I want to talk about um, changes in pets' behavior. Okay. As groomers, we see clients on an average of every six or so weeks. And I personally feel that this is the perfect amount of time to notice something that owners may miss because owners see their pets every single day. <clears throat> what may be a minuscule difference in behavior when seen on a daily basis will appear huge to a groomer who has not seen this pet in weeks. Right? And many times, a change in behavior is one of the early signs of an underlying medical condition. And let's remember that early detection means early intervention. So an early intervention can increase survival rates or decrease the recovery time. Okay? So some examples of changes in behavior. And that's Mickey. <clears throat> Uh, Brownie. Brownie was this lovely little uh, Shih Tzu. I could do anything to this dog. Um, he was an absolute pleasure to groom. And one day he comes in and he's snappy. And I mean, he's really snappy. And I called the owners to come pick him up and reschedule him. And then that's when the, their own, the owners notified me that the day before the house was burglarized and the intruders terrorized this little dog. The owners thought that maybe a change of scenery with somebody he loved um, would be better than staying at home. Brownie was suffering from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. So he just simply stopped grooming him and let him hang out with us while the owners cleaned up the mess at home. And the following grooming, he was back to his normal, wonderful self again. Right? Now, the total opposite of Brownie was Princess. Princess was a handful. I used to, I nicknamed her the Pterodactyl because she would like fly and nail you at the same time. Except for one groom in which he was very complacent. Right? In case you're wondering, I finished that groom. It was the only time in <clears throat> that entire 15 years that I groomed her. And there's Pooh Bear sticking his head out that she was an absolute pleasure to groom. I mentioned it to the owners and they had her vetted. It turned out to be the beginnings of a, a medical problem for which they was very um, easily treated. Casey was also a good boy for grooming. He was a very large golden retriever. He was also very social. So when he looked a little withdrawn and especially cautious around his legs, we told the owners it was not like Casey not to be wagging his tail the entire time he was here. I, the owner started casing on some joint supplements and the next, by the next groom, he was much better. All right. So the point is, don't ignore subtle changes in the behavior of the pets that we groom. None of these changes in any of these pets were noticed by the owners. And the longer a health issue goes undiagnosed, the less likely there will be a full recovery. Now, there are some other scenarios that can cause a change in behavior that is not necessarily medical in nature. All right. Uh, one can be family strife. Um, a lot of stress in the household. Maybe people are arguing more than normal. Um, there could be a loss of a job, uh, a family member is sick, um, kids either leaving for college or coming home from college, uh, moving. Uh, my own dogs took uh, a couple of weeks to adjust <laughs> to a cross-country move. He wants to see what they're barking at, all right? And you could also, is the addition, um, adding, adding or adding or subtracting family members. Um, so that could be divorce, it could be the birth of a baby, it could be adoption, it could be a death in the family. Any of those scenarios can um, start a change of behavior in the pet because the pets are really in tune to our, um, our, our moods and they feed off it and are affected by it.